All right, we're recording. Great. Thanks, Stephanie. You're welcome. Um, do we have any, do we need to do any minute reviews or anything from last time? I mean, I, at some point. No, I didn't include that on the agenda just because this isn't a regular meeting, it's a retreat. So I think we would save those for the next regular meeting. And okay. we also don't have um, public comment because it's a retreat? Correct. Yes. So yes. you can just get right into the meat of your retreat agenda. Oh, Lori, oops, I've got to let Lori in. I don't know why she's, I see you, Lori. All right. Um, great. So now that Lori's here, we can yeah. jump in. I've been there a little um, while, uh, raising my waving my hands around. Oh. And yelling at my dog. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, no worries. We haven't started yet, so you didn't miss anything. Um, great. So um, I thought we could do a quick, like, icebreakery type thing, just to like set the retreat stage. <laughs> Granted, I am not an icebreaker person. So um, what I thought we could do is um, introduce ourselves and say either based on where you grew up, some a, a place that's important to you, your culture, like what's a food that people assume you really like and do you like it or not? So I'll go first. Um, Lara Drocker, I grew up in Salisbury, Maryland, which is on the eastern shore of Maryland. It's a rural area, um, lots of chicken farms. Um, so because I'm from Maryland, people assume that I really would like crabs in Old Bay. And the answer is I do really like crabs in Old Bay. <laughs> I eat Old Bay on many things, including my like go-to comfort snack is like popcorn with melted cheese and Old Bay on top. So been eating that since I was probably in fourth grade and was going home on the bus and I continue to eat it occasionally. <laughs> um, all right, so then I'm gonna popcorn to somebody. And so that's just, you pick somebody who hasn't gone yet and uh, we'll get to the end. So I'm gonna popcorn to Stella. Um, hi, Stella D. I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, St. Louis style anything I've seen gets a bad rap on the internet. <laughs> so, so, so I guess, I feel have very strange ideas about the Midwest, but but I don't like ranch dressing. <laughs> I feel like that's a very Midwestern thing. And I've never liked ranch dressing. <laughs> awesome. Do you want to assign someone to go next? Oh yeah, sure. Sorry. Uh Jesse. All right. Um I grew up just in Watertown, Massachusetts, Watertown, just outside of Boston. So I feel like I should, my, my instinct was to go baked beans, but that's kind of an easy one. Everyone obviously loves baked beans. I'm gonna talk chowder. And of the New England, Manhattan and Rhode Island style clam chowder, those are the three I know about. There's probably hopefully more. Um, I think Rhode Island is the best. So, and that's the one with the clear stock, New England being with the creamy white stock and Manhattan with the red. It's just like, really, Manhattan. So Rhode Island. Uh, that being said, I, I guess I will pass it to Lori. Okay, so I, uh, I grew up on Long Island. <laughs> and... Um... I guess, well, chowder was one of our things too, but, uh, you know, being near the ocean, but I think bagels, bagels and lox are the thing I associate with Long Island and the thing that I miss the most because you really cannot get them around here, except at Cushman Market, which imports them from Manhattan every morning. <laughs> so. Oh, I should pick someone, um, uh, uh, Dwayne. <laughs> Well, both of my cards have been played a little bit. So 
Um, I was going to, I'm, I grew up uh, north of Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and uh, I, I was going to go with the crabs too, uh, though I don't eat crabs anymore. I, I have fond memories of, of a, in childhood banging the club on the crabs and eating crabs with the old bay seasoning um i guess i i didn't when i left baltimore basically around college um i didn't take the crabs with me i left them behind uh, but i did one of my fond memories i, I grew up uh I'm, I'm a devout atheist but i grew up uh, jewish and um 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 fondest memories of uh my 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 parents they moved to baltimore but all my rest of my extended family is from brooklyn new york and and uh when they came to visit or we visited them it was that jewish spread of uh, bagels and lox and whitefish and cream cheese and that that i like to this day uh uh is oh and it always brings back my childhood memories too and i'll go with uh with don Yeah, I grew up in um, north central New Jersey, a town called Mendham. It's fairly small. Nobody would necessarily know about it. It's seven miles west of Marstown. Um, and my favorite food going up, because New Jersey had New York style pizza, was pizza. Um, and I have not ever been able to find anything like it. Um, moving to Massachusetts to go to college and then to law school and then DC, Boston, then DC, never the same. So I miss my New York style pizza. And that leaves us with Steve. Yes, uh, I grew up, you guys are all like local. I grew up out in California in um, San Jose, which is the southern end of Silicon Valley, <clears throat> except when I was growing up, it was Del Monte um, canning factories with tomatoes. And they would truck these tomatoes in on really big trucks. And sometimes you'd be driving along the highway, these trucks rumbling by, and the tomatoes would fall off and they wouldn't go splat. They would just roll along the highway at 60 miles an hour, like a, like a baseball. <laughs> Um, but somehow they managed to cook these things down. So every summer there was steam rising and canned tomato smell throughout the valley. And then those in the 80s and 90s, I guess, got torn down and converted into um, at least the southern end of Silicon Valley. Um, I guess just thinking back, some of my favorite food was the, the sweet corn that we grew in our garden out there. We had a small yard, but we grew a garden every year. And back then the sweet corn was the sort that you had to like have the water boiling on the stove and then you'd run out and pick it and husk it on the, as you ran back and try to get it in the water as fast as possible. Cause if it was picked before you cooked it, it would uh, get all starchy. Uh, I since learned that there's much better varieties of sweet corn. And um, so my, my favorite food is still the sweet corn. It's the local varieties that are super sweet. Um, but with that old bay on there, somehow or somewhere along the line, I discovered the old bay. So old bay on sweet corn is, um, one of the highlights of the summer for me. All right, I think and we have- And let's see, Stephanie, I think Stephanie's next. Yeah. Um, thanks, so I grew up just north of Boston. So I am very, very local um, and close to Jesse. Jesse, I didn't know that we were nearly in the same area. So that's pretty cool. Mm. Um, so food. I. I almost wish you had me last because I really have a really hard time identifying which is my favorite, but I could go with seafood. I could go with pizza. I could go with, you know, but I would have to say because of my family, I'm going to go with pizza because my parents grew up in the North end of Boston by the original Regina pizzeria. Uh -huh. And my stepmother's married into the, her first husband um, was um, married into that family. So we have a kind of a connection with the Regina. Um, so I have to say pizza and sorry, Don, I'm going to compete with you for that best pizza category. <laughs> I, to me, the, but it has to be the original one in the North end. Like, I feel like that's the one. So yeah. And I love it. And I will pass it on. I think uh, Vasu, I don't think you've gone yet. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone. I grew up in Chennai, India. Uh, so 
I think Steve, you're uh, you're the closest. It's a 15 hour flight. Um, <laughs> it's it's a, it's a coastal city, uh, longest beach in the world. Um, I'm a vegetarian. I've never ever had meat. Don't plan on ever having meat, um, considering what whatever is going on in the climate. Um, so needless to say, I miss Indian food. <laughs> Um, my mom's food as well. My parents live in India. So, um, you know, uh, there are places in, in Northampton and Amherst, but it's not the same. Basu, I had the, the um, opportunity to, to visit India for the first time, Asia for the first time a couple of years ago, and I was to Chennai. Oh, uh, nice. uh, Massachusetts had a delegation uh, to Ch Chennai. Uh, to try to forge a partnership between the state of Massachusetts and the state of Chen uh, state of Tamil Nadu, um, and uh, we we were headquartered in Chennai for about a, a week or so, um, and uh, yeah, it was an incredible experience. Um, not the two highlights that had nothing to do with the work were uh, obviously driving <laughs> or being chauffeured around on the streets, which was like a, a wild to, to just compare to the U.S. streets. It's, it's uh, organized chaos. It is or exactly. Uh, and it seems to work. Uh, and then the second was the uh, I love Indian food, but the sauces uh, that, that they had there or whatever, uh, the, um, the condiments were just incredible and so much more varied than what we have in Indian restaurants here. I don't think Andrew has gone. Yeah. yeah. So third Marylander here, Maryland. Um, I actually am on the Washington end of Maryland and um, I will say that um, my favorite ice cream you cannot get in very many places is from Gifford's ice cream, one of the early, um, you know, homemade ice cream shops um, in Silver Spring, made Swiss chocolate ice cream. Mm. Mm. I tasted some that bordered on the Swiss chocolate, but it's just like this really subtle flavor. And um, one time I was in a workshop where we we're supposed to bring our favorite food and we we're gonna eat it like really meditatively. I brought a whole gallon of <laughs> ice cream and um, I did not get through very much of it. But <laughs> It was, it was a, a thrill to, to have it again at that point in my life. I wish we were in person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, I think the um, ice cream stand on 47 in Sunderland, it's a, it's a farm stand, sells Giffords. They, they now package it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, well, I'll see if they have Swiss chocolate. <laughs> um. Also, well, that was fun. I did not know we had the most people that we have are from Maryland on this group. That's kind of wild. Um, I was actually born I, in Baltimore. Fun oh, okay. cool. And I lived there 17 years, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've and, also driven okay. through Maryland. <laughs> driven through Maryland, okay. Um, Dwayne, I have to ask if you're connected to the famous burger cookies. A famous? No. I've never uh, heard of them. No. Uh, no. Yeah, they're like a, a famous Baltimore cookie, the Burger Cookies. Spelled no. the same way as your last name. Burger. Oh no, it's not spread. It's it's a different. Sorry, it's okay. E R, not R E. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but uh, nonetheless, I've, I haven't heard of that. No, it's yeah, interesting. Like chocolatey and. Oh yeah. Um, they're not that good. I mean, they're okay, but. Um, <laughs> I'm going to add my name to the Mar Marylanders. I lived in Tacoma Park for six years. So. Well, there you go. Um, we're taking over. Uh, all right. Awesome. Well, that was fun. Um, thank you all for playing along. Um, so as we've discussed over some in our last couple ECAC meetings, we thought we would do break this up into two different sessions. So this, this session today is really thinking kind of big picture. And I was trying to brainstorm how to facilitate this discussion most effectively. Um, and I have some ideas, but you know, I think we should kind of let it go where, where it goes. Um, 
but I think what we want to focus on, I think today will be successful is if we kind of are thinking through, you know, what are some of the big, not just specific projects we need to do, but like, how are we actually moving, you know, how are we turning ECAC into a, how are we ensuring that ECAC is a group that's like accomplishing our goals basically. And um, so I thought to start that discussion, um, we could start by just doing like a pretty open brainstorm session on that. So I sent everybody probably five minutes before the meeting started to their email, a link to a jam board. Um, did everybody get that email or if you have it, could you check your email and see if you have it? My cat is in my way here. Um, I don't think I got it. Okay. Let me check. Oh, yeah. Hold on, there's something there. Hold on. I see it now. No. Oh, wait, there it is. No, I got a reminder. March 26 but... is when it was sent. Yep, I got it. Jesse yeah. is um, messing no. with our word. I did not get it. Okay. Oh, Jamboard. Yes, I did. There it is. Got it. Oh, good. Okay. Um, so awesome. So has everybody used Jamboard before? A couple of people haven't. Okay. Because people are writing on it. So it's, it's basically like a whiteboard. Um, I know we have a whiteboard function in Zoom, but I've never used that. So I defaulted to th this one. Um, and what the, the good things about it is that we can, I can very easily PDF these and then we can share them around after our, our meeting. So that's what I like about Jamboard. Um, as you can see, you can draw on them. <laughs> um, so this first page here is just, so just to orient you a little bit with the Jamboard. And I think Stephanie- um, I'm gonna share my screen now, Laura. Okay, great. Um, so to keep us in line with open meeting law, um, Stephanie is gonna share the screen which means it's a little hard for me to see everybody. So folks feel free to jump in if they, if you have something to add, but um, this I, first I have page- something to add, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Just quickly, I don't know how this relates to like open meeting law and stuff, um, but just if the link's visible on Stephanie's screen share, I mean, I think it's unlikely, but then technically anybody could access okay. the dream board. I don't know. I don't think we want, but I don't think we, I think we want to just keep it to just the ECAC accessing the board. So people can see, as long as people can see what we're doing, they don't have to have access to the board. No, but I think what she's saying is that people could access it by typing in the- A lot of numbers. <laughs> yeah, it would be a little difficult, but- um... But I don't, I don't necessarily see that being an issue if edits are tracked, like who did what. Just like, I guess, like, just like worst, worst, worst case scenario. Like if somebody, not saying, I, this obviously won't happen, but with malicious intent, word at access the jam board it would look like it was us do you know what i mean right so we don't which is yeah i see what you're saying i don't know if there's a way to like draw on your screen so the link's not visible or if we should like sign into i don't Google. know you know what you could probably do stephanie is just type in another email address but don't actually click on it you know what i mean does that would that work oh yeah yeah yep. yeah yeah just like that there. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, it's okay. going to go. Oh, it's going to automatically go. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. You can try. You just don't, you just don't want to click, like type in the address, but don't click on it. Is that? Well, I don't know if I can do it. And then if my. Can you just delete it and leave it blank? Uh, or will it just take you away? I think as soon as I, because I'm trying to just. Yeah, I don't know that that's going to work. You could about also just open... sliding your window up so it's off the screen. Yeah. Uh, or sliding like a blank Word document just over it. No, you can't. If you're sharing that, it looks like you're sharing that. Yeah, I'm sharing, so I can't here. Sliding something Let me see. Well, or just keep going and I'll, Stephanie, I'll figure this out. <laughs> Stephanie, if you, if you highlight and hit the delete button, it goes away. If I, um, yeah, and then <laughs> click on something else, anywhere else. There we screen. go. All right. Yeah, there we Thank go. you, Vasu. 
Yeah. I should, we um, should have just gone right to you to figure that out. <laughs> Great. At this time, whoever, if anyone had malicious intent, they've already got it. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, it's back anyway. So anyway, um, all back. right, well, we'll give it a go and see how it works. Since some people um, came in as attendees, since we um, said this is a retreat and so we're not having public comment. So, you know. Yeah, thanks, um, Sandra. Um, so, and I think I'll make sure that as soon as our meeting's done, I'll download the PDFs um, so we have, have them from, from them. Um, okay, so the, the first, so this, I'm just, I just copied on this first page, our charge again, just so folks can have it to look back to if they needed to. Um, and the general purpose of our committee, which is to guide the town in meeting its climate mitigation and resiliency goals. So on page two, so if you if you click um, that little arrow up at the top, um, yeah. So I think um, the first activity is um, we just spend a few minutes on or see see how long we want to spend on this, but um, it's just thinking about like imagine ECAC is meeting that purpose, right? We're guiding the town into meeting its goals. The town is moving forward to meeting its goals. What does that look like to you? Um, and this can be a project, this can be a process, this could be anything. Like just what do you think would be happening in that, in that scenario? Um, the easiest way to add things to Jamboard is to click on the uh, sticky note, which is over, um, it's sort of in the middle of this toolkit on your left-hand side. And um, so I, you know, you just write something and then it kind of pops up for everybody. And it's, um, so let's just start um, writing things in. You could pick different colors if you want, and then we'll give it a few minutes. And when people are done, we'll, we'll look at it and maybe try to group things together. Does that sound good? Does anybody have any questions? No, all right. So let's go for it.
All right, these are awesome. Everybody's putting in some really great things. I'm trying to um, start to organize them a little bit here. Um, I think I'm seeing um, I'm seeing a couple of themes come out, but would love to get other folks thoughts. There's definitely some themes around, um, you know, goals and timelines and checking our goals regularly and verifying our goals. So that's, that's certainly a theme. Um, and then there's some things around education and process, it looks like. Um, then there's some things on specific projects around, um, or, or you know, get sort of like vi visions of what what things would be. So you know, we gasoline and vehicles are a rare sight. Um, Amherst is, you know, recognized as a a leader. Um, Um, then there's some points just on kind of process, like, you know, we, as a group, we have a good schedule, um, and we're covering our top priorities. Um, you know, we're updating clearly on what we, we know we're really working to move pro forward our, pro our processes and projects. Um, anybody else seeing, so I guess the themes I'm seeing is like tracking progress having good process and you know if we're successful all of these things will be true. you know having a roadmap I think is another one here and then we've sort of so those are like kind of the process side of things and then we've got you know residents are understanding how they can reduce emissions you know town is town constitution people are engaged um we're consulted ECAC's consulted as an expert um buildings have been converted um <clears throat> town land has been protected um anything any other thoughts here on so maybe we can put kind of on the left hand side sort of the operational pieces and on the right hand side here we can move kind of our our visions I think one thing I notice and that I'm also concerned about is that um, this idea of people understanding what they can do, um, that's a real problem. I mean, I've been trying to convert my house for months now and get good information about what the right thing to do is. <laughs> so uh, that, that's, a, I think, a, something that maybe we can help address. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I put a couple of stickies up with that sort of message in them, but I see a couple others too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Anything, anybody else seeing something that's surprising to them or that they want to make sure we highlight here? Regarding process, I'm not seeing as much as I would have thought about um, being inclusive as part of the process. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe we can find some way to. Well, there are words like accessibility and accessible shows up a bunch of times. 
So maybe it's in there. Okay, anything else? Are folks feeling like they've added everything that they, they want to add to this? All right. Um, so it looks like, um, so I think this is great. This is a good, um, a good sort of mixture of different things. Like I was saying of sort of process and goal setting or like tracking accountability of our work. Um, versus as well as kind of what we wanna to see town look like um, and what we wanna see engagement um, with uh, our communities and constituents here. Um, So with that, I thought the, and the next thing we could do, um, and then hopefully everybody feels a little comfortable with, um, and people feel free to add to, add to this um, as, we're as we're talking, because we can, like I said, we, we can go back to this um, next time. The, the next two frames that I've, that I've laid out are, um, I, I want to have our headspace in this as we move into um, thinking about it in a bit more um, start start to move from this really big picture into more project based thinking. So um, the next two tabs here lay out and and Steve, I used your document here to lay out. Um, I put them on two separate tabs because there it was too much to put on one. Um, kind of the four key areas that, that you identified, and these are pretty, and you know, from the cart, from our discussions, from the projects we're working on, um, of where we wanna make sure we're, what we need to do to make sure we're meeting our goals. So renewable energy development, resilient lands and healthy living, um, electrification and energy efficiency. And I wanna point out that Steve, you know, in all of these, we need to be applying the lens of uh, environmental justice and climate climate justice under each of these. Um, and then I laid out on top what I see is like the four key ways that ECAC and or the town need to address each of these issues. So either there either needs to be policy changes, process changes, and how the town does something or how residents or business owners do something or how we do something, research needs that we can contribute to or educational and outreach that needs to happen. Um, Laura, I'm sorry so, to interrupt, yeah. um, but I know that it sounds like you moved on to another tab. I just wanna make sure I don't wanna do anything. Did you, did you capture this one? Are you all set? Yeah, oh. it, yeah, it's good. 
Yeah. Okay. I just, I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Um, so how do folks think we, we should do this? One idea is to, um, is to take one at a time. One idea is to sort of fill in where you think you have interest or ideas within these four categories. Or four, I guess, four issue areas um, versus levers, I would say. So the levers are the policy changes, the process changes, the research needs, and the educational outreach to help achieve our goals of renewable energy development, um, residual lands and healthy living, electrification, and energy efficiency. So um, a lot of the, the policy changes, process changes, um, all those levers are in CARP. So um, do we want to have the CARP, you know, look at the CARP and kind of move things over or um, you've also created a kind of shorthand version of it that maybe could copy and paste from rather than just brainstorming what's on the top of our minds. Yeah, Jesse. Um, I think I, I'm not, I don't know what big picture was, um, but one, and, and Andre, this is not, to take over what you just said. It's just like another idea. I'm just, I think maybe just throwing a couple of quick ideas out. Um, but one is, I'm curious about sort of this leverage points and where, trying to identify in this matrix and in the carp and all these things, like where are we with the limit, limits that we have, like where, where does this group insert itself into the process best? rather than, I think we, we've got a good sense of the overall from the CARP and, and even just seeing it in this empty diagram, it even help, is helping me sort of like see, but like you had alluded to this idea of like, where do we fit in? I think it's something, something to consider as we move ahead, just really strategically thinking, not only as a group, but as individuals in the group. Not sure what that means. Yeah, yeah, that's too. Yeah, a couple of things to what Andres said and, and Jesse. Uh, yeah, I think some of the information is already in the CARP. So I wonder what the value add is in doing this exercise, unless there are more things that we want to add to the CARP. Mm -hmm. And I wonder to Jesse's point that if we should do a SWOT analysis to talk about what are we good at, what are we not good at, what are some of the opportunities that we have, and what do we know or about the town and the limits that we have um, that we need to be aware of. Yeah, so that's another, that's definitely another option is to do the CARP or do a, a SWOT analysis, FASU. Um, I was thinking and, and agreed, a lot of this is in, in the CARP. Um, I think what Jesse was alluding to, which is what I was trying to also get to, but perhaps not as well as we, not the best way to do it, is I think what, what I see as our, our challenge as a group is we, we know what's in the CARP, we know what needs to happen, um, but actually getting down to the details of like, what is the specific thing like what is the specific next step? We get a little bit lost in that. And there's so many specific next steps, some of which fall under ECAC and some of which don't, that it starts to feel overwhelming. And then we sort of go back to our 
I think what we, we go back to our kind of opportunistic approach as opposed to a, a planned, a process-based approach where we've really planned out like our, you know, our goal is to move forward on, on this thing. And to do that, we have to change this policy. And so we're really going to focus on changing this policy because that's going to have an overarching goal on overarching. Um, so, so I think this, my intent was to focus on what, because the CARP is broader than just ECAC, right? The CARP is what the town needs to do to meet these goals versus what ECAC itself is most, is best suited to do. And then are the processes in place for us to do to, to do that? Um, so maybe a SWOT analysis is a better approach. Um, I don't know, I'm open to ideas and, and thoughts here. I wonder if, um, and I'm just Googling SWOT analysis because I haven't done it in years and maybe ever. <laughs> And maybe what I'm about to say is a little bit like a SWOT analysis, but but I wonder if because when I look at this, I I these boxes are like really clear to me, and I wonder if this gets at what you all have been saying, where like if we each pick, you know, four or five or something, so people aren't like selecting ev all of them, and maybe just go in and mark in the boxes of things that we all individually, but not maybe broken down by name, just so we have a vision board of it. Like those boxes where people feel they have the most um, interest and or knowledge and or expertise. And then the things, the boxes where people, the boxes that people feel would most effectively move the town toward CARP goals. Because I, I wonder if just having that laid out visually, if there's alignment or mismatch between people, what people think is most important and what people individually have like expertise and interest in, if that could be helpful. Does that make sense? Yeah, Jesse. Oh, I you're on Lori, mute. I think Lori. Oh, sorry. It. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I can't see everybody's hand, so. I'll, I'll go after you, Lori. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to agree that I, I had to look up SWOT analysis too, but having this blank thing in front of me is a bit overwhelming, right? It, since so much of this is spelled out in the CARP and it might make more sense to uh, to be a little opportunistic, to look through that and, and figure out what, because the other cross section you want is what can we do, right? There's, there's our expertise, there's what needs to be done, what, what's relevant to, to ECAC. And then there's also what is right for picking, <laughs> um, which is, I think, really important um, right now because we need to do what we can do as fast as we can, right? Um, so I think it would help to have more than a blank page in front of us here working on this. Yeah, Jesse. Yeah, I, I, and, and I think what I, just to, quickly follow up and then say the other thing is is the idea of maybe that I'm hearing is populate this do a populate these pages and see what see what happens see what what occurs see what learn what we learn which is good I I'm trying to establish in my mind what the what the end goal is like what would I what might I learn or what am I looking for and maybe that's putting the cart before the horse but one thing that keeps jumping out at me and I'm maybe saying the same thing in a different way is how do we, we have to narrow what we're doing. We dramatically, I think, narrow what we're doing. And, and so I'm trying to put the sentences like, does it mean like we're gonna pick one thing we're gonna do this year or pick two things we're gonna do this year I heard someone say like four or five things per person. And, and I know it was a little, and it, it was, I'm just like the whole group does two things, three things, maybe the, it just, I, that to me thematically, as if we embark on populating, this is, is where my head is at. Yeah. So another way to look, I guess, 
another way to look at this could be CARP has been published for almost a year. And I think in that year, we've identified some roadblocks <laughs> to implement it. Like, like, you know, what are the policy, like what are the roadblocks that we're currently trying to address? And what are the ones that we, we haven't addressed yet? I mean, that's one, that's one way to look at it. Um, and we've made some progress too. So I don't wanna sound like we haven't done, made some progress because we've also made some progress, right? The other way to think about it is like, do we want ECAC to do projects? Is that our role? Or are we, should we transition to more of a advisory committee? And it, there, we put in process some, we, we focus then on putting in processes in place that ensure that we're advised at the right moments for the right things. Like, is that a better use of our time and expertise than trying to move forward on, um, you know, specific, or should we just be an education and outreach organization like group? And all, and all we do is, is make sure the public and the local businesses and other people are aware of what we're doing and that people's voices are heard in these, I mean, all of these overlap with different functions that already exist, but, you know, I think, so maybe, maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe it's focusing too much on the projects and not enough on the, like, what is the, maybe we could go back to the, you know, what is the role of ECAC in, in making sure where the town is meeting its goals, I guess. I think actually Anna might have something to say. Anna, are you here? And there's four people with hands up here. Um, okay. So again, I cannot see hands, so I don't know the best way to, to organize the conversation here. Well, Lori um, had her hand up. Why don't I why don't okay. I keep an eye on the hands? Lori had her hand up for a while. On, I'm sorry, we're not looking at the 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 hum board, whatever it's called. Right now, we could we could turn off the screen share. Well, if we're not yeah. doing any work on it temporarily, that might help. Sure. sure. Yeah. Um, Currently, Don has his hand up first. I'm in third in line after Stella. I have no being first, second, third doesn't matter to me. So, Lori, Stephanie called on you. Go ahead. No. It's seriously, it's your, it's your turn. Go ahead, Don. All right. Well, I, I, I just wanted to chime in and say I, I agree with Jesse. I, I may not have as good of a grasp of exactly what our charge is. I mean, I can read language, um, but I don't often, I mean, I'm a lawyer. Language can be interpreted all sorts of ways. Um, I always thought our charge was to advise the council on what the town ought to be doing. If that's not right, tell me, because um, that's that's how I've been operating in my head. Um, and and so going back to what Jesse said, I I yes, the carpet has been out there for a long time. I agree with the little stickums that said prioritize. I mean, I think we need to decide there's a limit to what we can accomplish um, and we ought to prioritize what it is we want to accomplish. What, what do we want to present to the council with respect to the goals we've set out as to actions for them to take, for the town to take? Um, which I always thought what our goal was, what do we want the town to do? We're, providing advice to the to the town council. Um, I, I don't know, do we have the authority to go out and do our own projects? I, I, I don't know if that's the case. Um, so maybe somebody could fill me in um, on, on that. But those are the issues that are swirling around in my head as I listen to this, so. Um. 
Um, I just, I just wanted to clarify because I think there might have been a little bit of a misunderstanding when I was listening to Jesse. I wasn't suggesting that we all volunteer to do like four or five things. I was suggesting basically because I think this is a really nice chart, basically turning it into a chloroplast. Like if people are familiar with that, like so, so you have the most kind of the most densely populated squares, and then the like least densely populated squares. Where here dense like lots of pop like little dots would indicate that there's like a lot of interest and knowledge there and also a lot of um belief that it's like important and then using that to guide like prioritization because if there's a box that's like empty like no one knows about it nobody thinks it's that important like then that could potentially be really helpful in immediately like ruling out what this particular group of people can prioritize, even if it's like definitely important. Like all these things are obviously super important, but like everybody here has limited scopes of knowledge and interest and time. And so having some sense of like where people's like interest and because people are gonna people even if even if in the abstract something, not that like objectivity in this way necessarily exists, but even if something is objectively the most important, if none of us are like interested in it, it's not going to go anywhere. You know what I mean? So I think having a sense of that could potentially be helpful. Okay, so I just wanted to say that um, I think there's a, something that's been said several times that's bugging the heck out of me that the, that the CARP has, has been out there already a whole year. I would say the CARP has only been out there a year, which is barely anything considering the scope of what's required from it. Uh, as a new member of this committee, I was sort of expecting we're going to go through those, you know, that that was our roadmap. And the question is, what did we want to take on? And I would love to be talking about that roadmap. And in that context, putting down, you know, what our interests and expertise is and what we would be excited about doing. And again, what is right for picking um, and prioritizing that way. That's what I, and that would also give us new members a better idea of what's been going on because starting with this blank slate is is not helping that unfortunately <laughs> um so i'd really like to just chomp it at the bit here to get moving on that um i'll leave it at that um and i wanted to say that we can decide what we want to put our energy into um in terms of advocacy um, in terms of gadfly, in terms of um, organizing. I tend to feel like um, there are other entities in town that could do a better job doing some of those things, um, but we are in a position where doesn't, we don't need authority, we, we are a group of individuals who are volunteering our time and we can say, hey, not enough is happening here. And it's 2022 and we have these goals we have to meet by 2025. What's, what's happening? You know, and we have access through Stephanie, we have a voice, uh, you know, as a town committee and we should use it to meet our goals best way we can. I just wanted to say something really, a clarification point, um, because it's been said several times. Um, this committee is not a committee of the council. You're not a town council committee. You're appointed by the town manager. So your reporting authority is not to the council. It's actually to the town manager. And then the town manager is the one who sort of relays that information to the council. It's not to say that they, there isn't gonna be some interaction, but there's been, I think, maybe because of the previous configuration of the committee, it, it really confused and blurred some lines as to how that process should go. And I think it actually confused things quite a bit. So um, just for that point of clarification, it doesn't mean the ECAC wouldn't support 
the town council and its initiatives or um, the town council wouldn't ask you for specific information, but it goes through the town manager. So I just wanna be clear that that's the pathway. You report to the town manager. If they want something from you, they should actually be going through the town manager. So that's all. So Fasu and Steve, and then maybe I'll try to summarize and see, get us on to a path forward. Yeah, Laura. So I think in terms of what we need to do today, um, I think of it as three different things around strategy, people and process. And with the strategy, it'll be our roadmap and the you know actions or the objectives from the CARF, which I can share with everybody. I'm, my attempt to try to give a score to each of those actions, um, which I, I can actually do that right now while we're talking about it. Um, and then the next part being around people to echo on what Don had said about, you know, not knowing what the exact charge is. You know, I, I think sometimes I struggle with, you know, Steve and Dwayne do a really nice job. They bring up, you know, Andra too. They bring up more and more stuff. I'm like, how do, how do they know what to do, right? And I, I struggle with that. And I, um, I, I think, you know, making use of all of our times as volunteers uh, and not just dump everything on Steve and, and Dwayne and Andra, I think that would be helpful. So, which I think the SWAT, doing a SWAT would help understand what are we good at and what are we not good at. Um, and then the third thing will be around process, which is, you know, execution is more on the tactical work around, okay, you have an action, you have these goals, are we tracking? How are we tracking? Do we have issues that we run into? What are our road, roadblocks and how do we overcome them? So I, I think that's the way I would look at it from a high level, um, you know, building the roadmap and, and the tactical aspect. And, and this here, what I'm sharing is, uh, the actions from the CARP um, and my attempt to rate them uh, by and I give an overall score. So, you know, the top ones will be the ones that we would be working on and the ones that are lower score does not make an impact. So we shouldn't be really worrying about them. Vasu, is that just your, I'm, I'm fascinated by that spreadsheet. Is that just your spreadsheet or is that something this committee has discussed? So I took all the actions from the CARP and I created this and, you know, my attempt was here, we have an action. Well, are we responsible for it or do we want to be informed? And if we're responsible for it, do we want to lead it or co-lead it or um, I think it was just awareness, right? So we all understand whether, you know, if Steve is working on it, it's just awareness. So he's a consultant in this case, right? Versus us being a lead. This is this is great. This, is this new then? This is the first time we're seeing this or has this been discussed before? It's we talked about it, uh, I think, uh, late last year. Thank you. Yep. Yes, yeah, Steve, then Dwayne. One of my thoughts is that since we developed the CARP, <clears throat> the uh, Massachusetts roadmap has been more widely um, presented and the roadmap provides further <laughs> roadmap for the actions that are needed. And yes, Laura, you presented those um, in, as the rows in your matrix there. Um, and those are similar to, but not necessarily always the same as what is in the CARP. Um, I think there's no shortage though of things we need to do and can do. And some of those are, are policy recommendations that go to the town, to the manager and the town council. Some of those are fleshing out of ideas that could become programs and I think the the rental property energy efficiency is falls into that example we're researching various possibilities there's a grant that's being administered by by Stephanie and the town as and some other agencies but some of us have been helping to shape how that might be implemented 
So I think there's a range of ways that we can work and perhaps we don't get too caught up into um, you know, whether we are strictly advisory or whether we can do things. Um, but I hope that we can do things guided both by our own CARP and by the urgency of items that are presented in both well, the Massachusetts roadmap as well as a slew of other reports that are coming out these days as to what do we need to do to stop burning fossil fuels and to get climate neutral in 20, 25, by 30 years from now. I just want to add my voice. I've been listening and, and uh, I don't disagree with any, any, anything that anybody said. Um, um, I find there's an urgency as we're doing at this retreat to, to uh, really hone in on what, we're, what we can do <laughs> um, as we've been talking about. Um, and I think it is, in my mind, it, it's kind of definitely an advisory role. Uh, we can maintain that. And I think we've been doing that uh, largely and, and, uh, um, and, and on, on both a proactive and an as needed basis as, as things circulate through the town council or in the town manager's office or, or that Stephanie's working on. So I think we, my sense is that we want to continue that role and, and, and build that role so that we do become a, um, uh, a well-recognized body for advice. Um, in my mind that we can sort of continue sustaining doing that uh, because I, I, it, that's not as resource intensive in terms of our time, I don't think, as taking on some projects. Um, because I think we do also, at least I'm very keen on using this body to, to um, be a real change agent in the town uh, in terms of um, some things we can point to that are in the CARP. Uh, that we we facilitate we 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 facilitated. Um, I think we need to look at points of leverage uh, because when it comes to those types of projects, and you know, S Steve and Andre, I think um, dedicated a lot of time to the uh, with the um, RMI uh, grant and, and project and so forth, and and uh, why well, I think we can hopefully replicate some of that. I'm not sure how, how much of that we can take on um, uh, given, given people's schedule and that this is a volunteer organization. Uh, so I think we also, I think we can do some of that, but I also am really keen on trying to find leverage points within, within in two forms. Maybe one is others, others in the towns that, that uh, are ent organizations in town. I'm thinking of the CCA, for example, but others uh, that are aligned with what we're doing, and we can bring them into some of these um, ideas in terms of uh, projects we might want to work on. Um, and then second is looking, using this body also to help to identify and potentially even, um, uh, I'm not sure about what Stephanie thinks about it, but, um, you know, supporting Stephanie in, in um, identifying and, and uh, finding funding opportunities for um, to support some of these uh, projects, more project oriented um, ideas that we might want to um, uh, move forward. Um, I, I'll finish by saying um, when it comes to sort of thinking about projects, um, and as was said before, um, I think we need to really prioritize what's in the CARP um, and pick um, one or two that are, are, are doable, actionable um, in the next, you know, in, in the next short period of time that we can sort of uh, start, start uh, down, down a path. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there. Okay, so um, thanks, everybody. That was really helpful. And um, one thing I think that came to my mind during that discussion was the, the town is ultimately responsible for the climate goals and implementing the CARP, right? So how, so I've heard a couple people talk about an advisory role. I've heard a couple people talk about going through and prioritizing. I think what, 
and the town has already done that to some extent. Like the town has taken the CARP and each town department that has gone through and picked out things that they need to be working on. Um, but there's things that are probably falling through the cracks that either maybe we have interest in or that we want to make sure push forward. There's other things we're already working, working on. Um, so I'm trying to think through like what, I guess where I sort of get stuck and, I, and I'd be interested in other people's thoughts on is um, if we want to play an advisory role, are we set up correctly to do that? As we're currently like our current as our current setup set up to do that, um, because one idea could be that we mostly play an advisory role unless somebody's working on a project or has interest in something that they want to bring to the table, and then you know we can con connect on that. I I don't know. I mean, I I'm sort of lost, guys, a little bit on who, what the best way forward for our our group is. Um, and so I'd be looking for any, like we could go through the, I mean, we could go through Vestu's list and the new members in particular could pick out some things they're interested in, in pursuing, right? I think that's a fine, a fine thing to do and we should do that. But does that address some of these larger questions about, um, or so maybe that's what we do. We just do, we continue to do what we've been doing, which is the small pro the projects we've everybody's doing what they're doing and we come to the group and we talk about them and we try to move them forward and we get asked to do things by other people and we do them. I mean, that could be what we do. Um, so yeah, Lori. Yeah, I, I think that's important. I think having a group that is responsive, that's how I, that's certainly what I feel like we ought to be doing. Um, finding out where we can make a difference and then making a difference and whether it's advisory or going out and doing some research or doing some outreach really depends on what we're trying to accomplish, which is why I can't, I, I can't answer your question, Laura, without knowing what it is we're gonna work on. Um, I'd like to go back to the first exercise. Um, we, when we were brainstorming, um, we had a lot of stuff about focusing on our goals and, um, holding different entities to the goals and co collaborating with different entities to reach the goals. Um, and then a lot of um, engaging. And I think every time we say, here, this isn't happening, how can we as DCAC make it happen? That's, um, that's when we say, okay, is it policy? <laughs> no. Is it education? Yes. Are we the right people to do the educating? Yes or no? It, it, do we need help from other people? You know, it, it's like really depends on what it is that's missing that we're um, obviously if the staff are doing great on, you know, getting electric vehicles, we don't need to do anything on it. Um, so, but, but we should be watching. We should be in the know and, and filling in and, or figuring out who should fill in if it's, something's not happening. So I, I think we, we have a beginning already in that efforts. Yeah, and do we, and so that's a good, I think that's a good point, Andre. I think the question is how do we get in the know? Do we feel like we're sufficiently in the know? Um, yeah, Dwayne. Yeah, just something came to my mind when, when uh, Andrew was just saying that. I mean, I think we, we um, um, I think we also, we're all about meeting these targets. Um, and I think um, we could spend a little bit of time really truth telling what, what's gonna really get us to these targets. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not the town itself. <laughs> it's the constituents within the town. It's all the heating we have. It's all the cars we have. It's all the electricity we use. Um, and the town 
you know, th th I think that differentiates us a little bit from, from S Stephanie's work, uh, particularly not to, to limit Stephanie just to the town, but her main work is, you know, the, getting the town, which represents, what is it, 3% of our greenhouse gas emissions for the whole town to, to uh, be a leader by example. Uh, and I'm, I'm wondering whether, you know, there's a, if we sort of really think about how do we make, meet these targets, which are enormous, um, it's, it's, the change has to happen, not at the town, but in the, in the people and businesses in the town. Um, and it, is that a focus, uh, more of a focus? And that's education. And it's, you know, when we talk about projects, it's more like, are there demonstration projects that we can stimulate um, that um, lead the way, help to lead the way? And that, I think that's, you know, what, what uh, the work um, Steve and Andre were doing with the, with the um, RMI and the, and the, the, the um, rental properties and efficiency and, and, uh, and electrification. Um, but I think, I think we want to not lose sight of some of the, uh, of, of, of substantial focus on the real issue, on the real pathways to this deep carbon um, decarbonization um, and, um, and the role that we can take um, in the, in the broader town, uh, not just the town government itself. Yes, Stephanie. I just want to um, second what Dwayne just said about the fact that a lot of the impact really is in the broader town. And that is something that the town doesn't have the control. We don't necessarily have the control over. Um, I mean, Yes, maybe eventually some of our policies can implement more of that, but that takes time. And so we're really needing to, um, you know, we are definitely needing to educate folks on what it is they can do. I think that gets back to Lori's point about like, how do I, how do I, as a resident of this community who's a homeowner, how do I do the right thing or, or the thing that, you know, will get us to our goals? And I, I do, I mean, I've always felt that there is a really big component of this that requires education and outreach. And, and you are obviously an incredibly knowledgeable group and I think you do provide that um, when it's asked for, I think you've contributed. In some ways, I feel like you feel frustrated that you're spinning your wheels, but when I look back at what's been accomplished, I think you've done quite a bit and I think the way that you're engaging with, you know, the work that I do, but also with outreach to the town, you know, is kind of the work that you should be doing. And maybe it feels a little more haphazard, but I do, I do think you're, you're doing a lot more than you think you are, if that helps <laughs> at all. Yeah, so I think, um, Thanks, Stephanie and Joanne. Yeah, that was that's a really good point. So then that kind of comes back down to the um, education and outreach piece, and and it's something we've been talking a lot about for a while. Um, and how do we move that? How do we move forward on on that? Or do folks have thoughts on? Because it gets a little overwhelming pretty quick. Yeah, Andra and Don. Um, I think that we should focus um, a lot of our energy on electrification and energy efficiency. You know, the very things that people can do in their own homes or that we can influence landlords to do in their tenants' homes. Um, Renewable energy is going to happen eventually. <laughs> we'll have a CCA. This particular group does not actually need to do a lot right now on that. Um, there will be a time when we need to, um, and that you know, or or we could, but we could also um, just help facilitate other organizations. 
to participate in outreach. So um, yeah, there's already a process for that. We don't have to do it. Um, the resilient lands, healthy living lifestyles, whatever you had over there, um, I'm not sure about. To me, um, the biggies are electrification and energy efficiency, focusing on our buildings and particularly on the private residential side. Yeah, Don and then Steve. Yeah, actually, I, I agree with, with what you just said, Andra. Um, you know, I, I was looking at the, the, in the materials that were sent out, I was looking at the, the CPACE materials and some of the little questions. I mean, you know, we did have questions for us to consider, you know, how do we, this is an outreach and educational kind of thing. How, how do we get the word out about this program? How do we get it out in a clear enough way? Um, and, you know, one of the things people suggested was getting a list of eligible owners. I would think that through the town records, we ought to be able to, I mean, I, I know some of them from my business. I know Kurt Shumway, I know Barry Roberts, I know, um, but we ought to be able to get a list. And, and, and then, you know, do we put together materials? Um, you know, how do we go about actually disseminating the information to the target group um, to be able to just to take one project, one program, CPACE, and say, how do we make that work in this town? We have, a, because it's a university town, we have a lot of, you know, multi-unit, smaller houses. We have, a, we have probably have a lot more buildings that actually meet the criteria um, for CPACE. So it, it, it has potentially enormous impact if, if we can get our landlords who don't know about the project or who think they know a little bit about the project to really understand how this could be a game changer um, in a lot of ways. Um, I can have yeah. a, if, sorry to jump in only because I have a direct answer to Don. I think, you know, the easiest thing for that is partnerships and collaboration. We have the bid and we have the chamber right here in town and they're the organizations that we want to work with. And I think Steve can tell you that it sounds like a really straightforward and easy process to get a list of, um, <laughs> you know, who may and may not be eligible, but as we're discovering, it is not that straightforward to get the data. I mean, I think people think the town just has these things readily accessible and we have lots of databases, but things are not always organized in the ways that you think they might be. And it's, Steve, Steve can verify, it's just, depending on what you're looking for, it can take a lot of time. But the bid in the chamber, really easy groups to um, work with and they're almost always willing and open. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure. No, I lost track again, sorry. Um, I know Steve was next, and then beyond that. <laughs> um, from my perspective, I, I think it would be great if members of the committee picked an area of interest, and it would be fine if it's something from the CARP. It would be fine if it's one of the uh, rows in the matrix that is on the, on the Jamboard. And then spent some time, maybe, maybe there's two members working on a thing, on a theme, spend some, some, spend some time figuring out what needs to be done. And then in a future meeting, you report back, here's what we think needs to be done. And to either to make a recommendation or to make a collaboration or to write a grant, whatever that next step is, is the thing that, that gets work done. And hopefully we get all the spaces in that matrix filled out, but it's not critical. I think it's more critical that we have people working and moving some projects forward, the projects that they're most interested in and knowledgeable about and excited about spending some time on. So in that, maybe, maybe we go back to Vasu's spreadsheet there and um, you know, especially the newer members may want to ask questions about some of the initi initiatives there as they think about which ones they might want to uh, adopt 
and take a lead on. Yeah, Lori. Yeah, so I like everything I'm hearing now. Um, I wanted to make one comment. Uh, I like Don and Andra's comments. Um, I want to, personally, I think the emphasis though should be on conversion rather than um, efficiency because we already have mass saves doing a pretty good job of being very accessible about giving advice to homeowners and anyone who wants it on energy efficiency. Um, the bigger problem is, is really how to get people to do that conversion and how to do it and how to get the information you need. Um, I hope I will, when I'm done with my own process, be able to report back because I am contacting a wide variety of <laughs> contractors and everything from block power to mass saves and uh, other people in the state to uh, try to figure out what's the right way to go about doing something like this. So um, I might have some input there at some point. Uh, but this is this is a problem that is not solved yet, whereas the efficiency one, and I also think is less important in the sense that if we succeed in doing this energy transition, we will have clean energy and efficiency will be less important. Um, it's way down the road, I know, but it's uh, something else to think about at any rate. Okay, so um, this, Don sort of got us to where I was thinking we would go to next time anyway, which is try to take one project and really work through exactly what we needed to do to get it done. Um, I think CPACE is a good example because it's there um, and and I agree with, I, I think I saw some nodding heads around, you know, education and outreach is where we have our biggest thing for our buck because we're trying to reach residents and, and commercial owners where we, we can't wait for policies. Um, and then when policies come to us to get, and then I think there's another, still another question in my mind about how to make sure policies related to, um, this work come to us and budgets get reviewed by us, but that's sort of a separate a separate question um, that we can tackle maybe a different time. Um, Dwayne, yeah. So I just want um, didn't want to interrupt that, but um, just want to add. I, I think I, I agreed. Uh, Don's on to something there. Um, I would um, I, I would not necessarily limit. You know, if we if we bring together, use the bid and the. Uh, chamber to um, organize an event, a symposium or an evening uh, gala or whatever um, with the uh, with the uh, commercial owners in the in the community. Um, I, I guess I maybe it's a trivial point. I wouldn't limit it to CPACE. CPACE is a mechanism, yeah. uh, but but what are they going to finance with CPACE? Uh, so as I see it, it's an opportunity to um, bring forward what we were also talking about, maybe more on the residential side, but on the commercial side of here's how you electrify, here's the opportunity to electrify commercial buildings. Some of them, if I understand, are, are probably multifamily units. So it may be more akin to residential, but, you know, give them nuts to bolts of here's, here's some really good um, opportunities to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions. Um, we could bring in some of the, the, um, uh, suppliers of this equipment um, from town. Cerner provides heat pumps, and I'm sure there's others. Uh, we're from out of town, um, and um, uh, a representative from Mass Save. I, I think to, to Lori's point, I think ideally you do the efficiency with the electrification because the electrification really needs that efficiency to work well. Um, uh, and, and I think we want to make that clear to people. Um, and, and sort of give it, you know, give it nuts to bolts. Here's 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 some ideas of, of technology to employ, and here is a, a, a new a finance a financing mechanism that can um, make it work for you without great ex, uh, out, of, out of pocket expense. Yeah, Dwayne, you want to add? I do think I I'll just add. I think um, if we do pull something like that together. Um, 
again, I don't, we probably don't have, maybe we can do some homework and, and, and provide some broader um, information that's useful, but I think it really needs to come from quote unquote experts and vendors in the field um, to, to bring this information uh, and contact, direct contacts that the, that the uh, uh, owners could, could contact. Uh, but then I, I think we can also, you know, probably, you know, maybe think of getting somebody from Mass Save who can speak for Mass Save, uh, and even from the Mass CC or something to come out to talk about these these programs as well. Yeah, Andra. So, if we were in person, we might at this point divide into people who want to think more in depth about this idea of going after the commercial properties and, and some who want to go after, you know, the residential properties and, and start some working groups right now, but we can't do that. So maybe this is the moment to say, okay, who's in for this, you know, and um, take, or, or maybe that's our, our next meeting, but, but let, let's just take a minute and think about what to do with these ideas. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. So I guess I, I'd also pause and say, I mean, I heard from some of our new members that I think they want the opportunity to make sure that their interest, they, you know, we're identifying projects that they have interest in or pieces of these projects that they have interest in. So um, looking to Don, Stella, Lori, Vasu, um, is there another, is there something else in addition to sort of this electrification and energy efficiency in these two buckets, commercial and, you know, landlords and residential, I would say, um, is there something else that we need to throw into this mix or do we want to, do you want to take some time to look at the CARP again, best use spreadsheet and come back next time with, with some thoughts. Yeah, Stella. I'm always ready to talk about vegetation. <laughs> uh, I think the, I think, I think that like, we can't forget the residential and commercial, like proximal land management when we're talking about like electrification. And I think it does relate. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I really said this, but like, I have experience doing commercial tree work and like that industry has seven times the carbon emissions of like related industries. And if these buildings like electrify, if you have guys coming, like people coming two, three times a month to like mow the lawns on ride on mowers and like, you know, like that adds up. And so I don't think, I know it's, I, I don't, I wonder if it's maybe too much to draw in the like, the, the land piece um, and the land management piece, but I think it is really hard to disentangle and probably part of the same maybe conversation with people, especially because I think commercial land use and town land use for that matter, really sets the tone for residential land use, you know, just like as a like very concrete example, like if the town said, okay, we're doing no mow May, you know, we're not mowing the common for the month of May that like sets a tone that like definitely has effects. Um, so I, I do think vegetation has a role. I think like, and I think it has, it also like gets people excited if the town, again, just, I don't know what the town's like wood use is, but if, if the woods like going, if tree removals in town have like an end to end local process where like the woods getting milled up and turned into furniture, what have you, like that also sort of similarly can really like change the tone of like residential land use. Um, so that would be my two cents. That might, might be my two cents on, so I guess there's a question there, which is, is bringing in vegetation into this initial like conversation about electrification too much? Um, because if it is, then like, you know, I'm like happy to work on, on anything, but if it's, but if it's, so that's the question, and, and, then, and then the comment is, the comment is my two senses. I, I, I think it's really interrelated. 
to the to the to the education and outreach piece on electrification because too many people I see like just electrifying their houses and then and then doing things very conventionally when it comes to the surrounding land. Um, yeah, that's a good question. My gut tells me that that's a separate conversation, like, or maybe the tactics a little bit different. Like, is the tactic are these commercial? I guess my first the first thought that came to mind. Well, let's step back. I think for the residential piece, I think they could be combined. I think for the commercial piece, my first thought that comes to mind is that those companies probably aren't doing that work themselves. And so maybe we're talking about focusing in on the land management companies. And maybe that's a separate conversation. I don't, I don't know, um, but that's a good, a good point. There's also a place where, you know, it, is it a policy? Like, do, I know there are, there's been, talk and I think even there are there's some counselors talking about like gas ban you know bans on gas powered equipment um is that some we've been asked about that before like is that something we want to pursue um or or do we want to go with more of the voluntary approach or both you know at the same time yeah Vasu yeah, I think each of us is going to have something personal that we want to work on, right? And, and you know, Stella talked about vegetation, and you know, Steve could have something else. But regardless of what we like to do and what's personal to us, I think we need to look at the overall impact that we each of those actions would have. And I think prioritizing prioritizing those ideas and saying vegetation might not be the top idea. These are the top four actions that if we take, we can reduce emissions by X amount. I think that is more powerful than asking what we like to do. I, I think that's important, but I, I don't think it'll you know, move the needle as much. Vasu, is it just me or is uh, Vasu, is your microphone being weird? You sound very distorted. Does anyone else hear that? Yeah. Oh, geez. How, how about now? Now it's good. You didn't hear anything at all? No, we heard it. There was just an okay. odd robotic sort of sound to it. <laughs> OK. But you got the gist of the message? OK. <laughs> Thank you. Following up on that a little bit, I what I heard from um, Stella was great. I think that that's a wonderful thing. I would maybe ask whether it fits in the resilient lands and healthy living um, as, as a, one of the initiatives better than under electrification. And even if it's not high impact in terms of reducing carbon emissions, I think there can, there can be value be, as in showing visibility as part of the education and outreach um, and getting people to think about their actions and the consequences and their values. So there's, you can, I think a project can still be valuable even if it doesn't necessarily move the needle on carbon emissions alone a lot. I completely agree, Steve. I, I think that's why we need to look at factors, right? It can not just be carbon emissions. It's, it should be around, um, you know, how long does it take, right? You, you could move the needle by a significant amount, but it's gonna take six years. Yeah. Well, you, you could take on other actions that, yeah, yeah. We, we have to think about those factors. So we could have a matrix that has some of these different attributes for each of the projects and yep. carbon, carbon emission is one, but speed and yep. bang for the buck, things like that could all be- Financing, right. Yeah. In. But yeah. I guess my preference is if somebody wants to do it and it's kind of in line with the CARP and or the Massachusetts roadmap, then go for it, develop a plan. Um, Lori or Don, any other, any thoughts from you on, I, I'm Don, I think you sort of brought this idea forward, so we might've got you covered, but, um, you've so, got me covered. You've got okay. me covered. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have anything additional. I, I'm okay. We have on the table. Um, so so this is this is what I what I'm hearing. 
um, you know, definitely want to focus on the community at large. It's easy for us to get focused on town stuff because that's the stuff that comes to us quick, but you know, that's not where the largest emissions are. Um, focusing on electrification and energy efficiency. Idea, I really liked your, your idea, Dwayne's, about maybe having an event organized with bid on, for commercial properties, bringing in these experts, bringing in the finan financing mechanisms. Um, something we probably want to brainstorm what that might look like on the residential scale. Maybe that's an event at, Hitch at Hampshire, or, yeah, Hitchcock or something else, or maybe that's partnering with Mothers Out Front or some other groups. They could think there's something that we could think about there. Um, the point about land management, is this the same conversation, a different conversation? Is that a slightly different project um, is another question. And then I think the goals and benchmarking, Vesu, that sounded like what you were kind of getting at. And that was definitely a, a clear topic of interest from our original brainstorm. So like, how are we tracking progress on our goals? How are we trying to see how, I think, how are we tracking our progress and goals? We probably want to also think about how do we track the benefits of, so if we hold this event, like, is there a way to track whether that event was successful and how to make it more successful? Um, and then this question of like, I think we all sort of agree that we want to play an advisory role and are we, are the, lines of communications there to help us do that where we need it when it's needed I guess is the best way I can think of describing that so um what do folks want to do with I agree with Andre if we were in person we would split up we're not we can't be in person so we can't do that so what is the best use of our time so so that's kind of five five ideas um, you know, we could sit down together and try to map out, we could have, if somebody wants to take the lead on the commercial property idea, like we could spend some time next time really mapping out, what would that entail, who needs to call who, who needs to email who, and like all hands on deck, let's figure out, let's assign tasks and get it done. Um, we could start there and then if we ha still have time, go into some of these other ideas, the residential property idea, the goals and benchmarking and, you know, and I know that Stephanie, you're gonna get an, an intern at some point. So that will cover some of that. But um, anyway, open to suggestions on how to make the conversation most useful next time. And how do we kind of, in this, in this space that we're in where we meet once every two weeks and we go away and then we come back. Like, how do we make this, how do we move this forward? Yeah, Stephanie. I just want to throw in the mix um, while we're thinking about sort of project initiatives for next time, that there is a request in the ARPA funding. I put something in about um, a heat pump program. Mm. Um, and so there, there is, I haven't gotten like a firm yes or no, but um, I think the idea is that we might want to try to, again, partner with an agency to help implement something like that. But I really do see that there would be a role for the ECAC in that initiative. Um, so I just wanna put that out there and it might be, you know, that might also align with the CCA efforts too. But again, just letting you know that that's kind of an on the horizon thing that there is, and there is funding being requested for it. And it's specifically, you know, the non-English speaking, low income, you know, residences that we really want to target to. So just putting all that out there, because that'll take work. Yeah, Steve and Lori. I guess I have two thoughts. One is um, as a possible homework assignment for the next meeting is that people go back and look at the CARP and, and look at the matrix and, and then come back next week with some project ideas that they would like to possibly take the lead on. Um, that might be a good activity or, or questions about some of the things in, in the CARP. 
um, for areas that they might want to take the lead on. So that that's one 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 idea as we as we run down to the end of the meeting. The other was um, separately. I was sort of semi prepared to discuss and try to justify this proposal to organize our efforts under those four or five categories, which Laura adopted in the uh, Jamboard slide, renewable energy development, um, resilient lands and healthy living, electrification, energy efficiency. And then I, I actually, I like how you put education and outreach as a column across for all of those as instead of a separate row. But, but I'm wondering if people are happy with that, if we wanna discuss that as, as a organizing structure for us. Or, or, or not. I for, I for one think it'd be helpful to think through that, like, like even for this process, even for the project around commercial properties, like let's look at just commercial pro 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 property electrification and efficiency. Like we know one thing we can do is try to organize this event and that will touch on education and outreach, but we also know we are gonna need some policy, we're probably gonna need some policy, whether it's at the local or state level, we probably are gonna need some research or some other information. And so I feel like we need to keep that framing in mind as, we're, as the ebbs and flows of this work happen. So we're, let's say we have this event in September or whenever, and then what's next for the commercial, what's next for that project? Is it another event? Is it a policy? Is it, you know, I feel like, so I don't know if it makes sense to necessarily map them all out at the moment, because then that may get overwhelming. I, I agree with that point that some folks made, but I think that's the framing we need to, be aligning our work with, right? In some way, I don't know. Um, Lori and Jesse. Um, okay, I wanted to mention something that's come up a few times now. Um, uh, so when we talk about partnering with some agency to try to make some change happen, some electrification happen, I worry a little that we're out of our, um, I mean, Okay, I'll, I'll get a little personal. I mean, the thing that I think causes the problem here, there's funding available, there's all these great programs through Massachusetts available, but when it comes right down to it, when you bring a contractor in to look at your place and give you a quote, the contractors around here I'm finding out all want to do dual fuel. <laughs> they know furnaces, they like furnaces, they want to keep doing furnaces, um, and they don't have answers. If you ask, why are we doing it this way instead of that way? They'll tell you, oh, because the manufacturer recommends it. And if you call the manufacturer to find out, they tell you to go back to the HVAC guy that's their local representative. So you can't get answers to anything. So I worry that this is a place where, and what, I, what I'm figuring out is there are companies that do this like Block Power. And I think there are others that come in and make those connections, make the recommendations, find the funding and make it happen. And I wonder if we shouldn't be thinking, and maybe this is for another discussion sometime, maybe in working on these, figuring out how to, how to partner with agencies to do things, this will come up and this will be where we're going. But I just wanted to throw that bit of insight out there that's from my own recent pain <laughs> that might be useful. Yeah, that's a good, so, so I think that reiterates Steve's point a little bit that you know, we do need to be thinking in these four buckets because in my mind, that's a, I don't know what bucket that would fit in, right? But that's sort of like a, a process bucket or a, you know, how do we get the, um, yeah, or maybe we also need an education approach to the providers and we're probably not, we're definitely not the right people to, to do that. So who do we need to talk to about doing, about doing that? Um, or maybe there's stuff out there that we don't know about. So then that's where the research comes in. Maybe Greenfield Community College or Holyoke Community College or one of the colleges is actually offering trainings on this that we, you know. So yeah, I think you're sort of illustrating to me, Lori, like the can of worms opening up that makes all this a little hard to, to focus. 
Um, but I think we can focus. We just need to always have that larger framing in mind in some way. Yeah, Jesse. Uh, so question, does this meeting end at 6.30? So yeah. one thing that occurred, I mean, I've got, I would imagine everyone here has got like a million things. I, and, and I know in the agenda, I think you had put in some time to establish what we're gonna talk about next time. I'm curious, is there, is it, I wonder if it would make sense, Laura, rather than putting that on you to, to create an agenda for next time, to if, if, if you could be supporting that, is it, I wonder if, if like more than one person can take all the notes that they, you know, sort of take everything that happened today, or maybe we even use the next 10 minutes, sort of spit it out. What do we want, what do we want to do next week? So the last two hours of retreat for the year, what do we want to do? Spit it out and establish maybe a couple of us. And I'd be happy to, to meet in a group with someone, come up with a, an agenda that, it could it could emerge from a dialogue based on uh, on a listening session. Does that is that out of line? I don't want to step on toes. No, I would love for that. Uh, Andra and Steve, you have your hands up. I don't know about that or something else. I think Andre's pointing at me. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think that is a great plan, and that's kind of in line with uh, what I mentioned earlier. Was that we all think of a problem that needs to be solved, and that's one approach. Think of a problem, and and that is, it could be the electrification of home appliances, and then we start brainstorming how to solve that, and that would be <clears throat> the role. So if Lori was excited about that challenge. That could be the thing that she comes back to next week and in, and in future regular meetings, reports on her ideas, progress. We discuss it for a little bit in our regular meeting, and then we go on to the next effort that's being done. And, and maybe that's Don talking about organizing a, a CPACE conference for building owners. And he presents a little bit about what he's learned. We give him some feedback. And then we go on to the next project. And I talk a little bit about rental efficiency um, updates. So that means that each each one of us has got some kind of a project when we're doing work outside of our meetings and we come back and report on progress, get some feedback and ideas from the rest of us. And then we, in between meetings, we're continuing to advance those efforts. And that includes doing research, but partnering with organizations, whether it's in town or nonprofits or statewide to help advance that goal or solve that problem. That would be wonderful. That, that looks like, sounds like a great way to move forward. So people just need to find a project they're excited about and willing to invest some time in. And maybe that's the homework assignment. I took my hand down, but I, I think that just, yeah, let's, let's talk about what we want to talk about next week and whether there's anything in between that should happen um, in terms of information gathering or idea gathering. If, if I could just correct something, I'm actually way more interested in thinking about conversion of larger buildings, um, but dealing with it on my own, I see what the problems are <laughs> for one little building, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll say, Lori, is that I was successful with Western Mass Heating and Cooling. It just took a long to get time and to get in their queue. Well, yeah, um, I, have, I have like five quotes now, but they all conflict. They're all telling me different stories, and I don't know which one's right. They're 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 not making sense. Happy to chat offline. Ours has been going really well. Um, so. 
does anybody want to step up to leave the next meeting? <laughs> Are you not here? No, I'm here, but I think, um, you know, it might be helpful to get another person's take on how to organize. I mean, I think, so, so we have a couple, I think we have two options on the table. Option one is Steve's option where we each bring an idea or a thought and we kind of riff on those for a little bit. Option two is we double down on this commercial event and we really talk through like, what would it take to do it and who do we need to talk to? Um, the problem with that is that it, we, it might, the first answer might be we need to talk to bid and we just have to do that and wait and come back. But um, you know, that could be, we could build that, that out a work plan for that um, and then use that structure of the work plan to then have other folks develop their own work plans on other projects that they want to work, that they want to do. Or we could take all the Jesse's suggestion and take all these notes and like somebody else with a fresh brain, look at them all and come up with uh, an agenda for next time. So I think those are the three choices. Unless Andre, you're gonna throw number four in. <laughs> no, I was gonna weigh in on um, not the second choice. Um, this is our retreat. This is our time to step back from project development and details and um so we shouldn't dove into one um except to think about okay so how would we do that you know and and perhaps two people could agree to come up with um a proposal for how to do something like that and that could be a model for how to do other projects, I mean, we kind of have other models already, but just, you know, to lead that part of the agenda, how do we um, go forward on something that not everybody is going to work on? And then some other people might um, take a piece of the agenda to talk about um, education. Yeah, Stephanie? Um, you've in the past sort of divided up some ideas for projects and you know a couple of people working together on specific areas. So you've kind of been there before and it does seem like this is the opportunity for the people that, um, said they would work together. And, and this might've been pre some of our newer members. Um, although I think like Vasu was working on education and outreach. So I think only maybe Lori and Stella weren't necessarily assigned to something, but I, you know, to sort of move forward from that idea focused on a particular area. And I think it was one of the five areas that Steve identified looking at Steve's breakdown and coming up with even just, you know one or two ideas that exist in the CARP going back to Vasu's breakdown, maybe sort of using his breakdown as your model. And then sort of those two people going to that list, taking projects and saying, you know, at the next meeting, at the next retreat, these are the things we want to do. And then what Andra just said, creating the formula for how you then move that forward. So that everyone's kind of working on a similar thing, but it's, you're all looking at different areas, but you're in different projects, but you're coming back at the next meeting to do what Andra said. I'm just basically encapsulating, I think, what several people said. Um, and then you create that that formula for moving those forward. Because, you know, I, I don't think you want to be spinning your wheels going backwards. I think you want to be going from a point where you already got to and moving ahead. All right, we have one minute left. How do we want to take this forward? I think we need assignments based on what we all talked about, even if it doesn't end up being the particular group that you're going to work with ongoing. Just a couple of people who seem to be interested in this or that to 
um, look at the CARP, come back to the next meeting with some suggestions as Stephanie laid out. I, I, do, I, I, yeah. ahead, I, I just do think we want to think about an outcome for next for, at, for the for the end of our retreat, uh, which I agree with whoever said that, you know, we don't want to necessarily spend retreat time going into details about exactly how we're going to do a project. But I think as an, as an outcome of next week, it would be great to be all on board uh, with um, uh, with a set of projects uh, that we are excited about. Um, and maybe everybody comes with a couple ideas that they're interested in. And, and there's a process during the retreat to compare them and contrast them and cons uh, con uh, con put them together into, into um, uh, a couple different projects. There, there may be overlapping um, uh, ideas um, and to come up with a number of projects that we're all comfortable doing and then assignments of sort of for the next summer months or whatever to work on those, uh, on developing those projects. I, I sh we should not lose fact lose uh, track of the, of the of our role as advisors as well and maybe there, there's people amongst us who you know don't want to be so focused on projects but may be more focused on providing um, you know uh, procedures and mechanisms and research and so forth that we need to provide advice to various parties okay so what I'm gonna suggest is, or if I do you want to see something quickly yeah, it, maybe what I could do is work with Steve, add those five classifications that he had uh, proposed into the matrix and then share it with the rest of the team. The rest of the team can add new actions that they want to take on if it's not on the card already. And then we can classify those based on those buckets that Steve had. And then we can talk about it at the next meeting on who's, who's doing what. So I would say a similar, I think you should definitely sit around your document. I think we should each come to the next meeting with what you want to work on. And if everybody wants to work on the commercial event, then that's what we'll work on. If everybody, if one person, if we all want to work on different things, we'll, we'll prioritize a little bit, but I think we should just come to the meeting with what would make you excited to work, do work outside of ECAC time. I think that's like, the, yeah, Jesse. And and think too maybe about how much time that is. Good. And maybe point. we should all, and, and I might give an embarrassingly low number of hours with yeah. you know my my life situation right now, but still want to consider myself valuable and not slow other people down, et cetera. So that might be something to think about. Okay. And then we'll figure out if anybody wants to brainstorm with me or has an idea on how to run the agenda so that we can get through all those ideas and end up, I think to Dwayne's point with a clear outcome, uh, let me know. Okay, I'll um, save the Jamboard. I took a few notes, I'll save those and our, our front page and I'll send those to, um, to Stephanie. Question, can I send an email to everybody or should I just send it to Stephanie and will Stephanie forward it? You could send it to me because I'm thinking it might make more sense to send that to me and Laura. We have a conversation with whoever wants to work on the agenda and create the agenda and send that out. Like really, we need to get it out in the next day because um, because the meeting's next week. I need to post it by Friday. So yeah, I'll, send it. I'll send it right after this meeting, yeah. well, some changes. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. I'll talk again next week. Bye, all. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Well,